And a shell does this when it wants to pipe together processes. So for example, if we cat all the uh, C files and then um, grep for the word fork in those files, and then all those matches are piped to the word count program to check how number of lines, how many lines are going to, uh, to be uh, found by grep. The reason this works is because the shell creates a pipe for this vertical bar and a pipe for this vertical bar. That's why they're called pipes. Uh, so one pipe to communicate output of cat to input of grep, and another one to communicate output of grep to the input of wc. So the shell process will create those two pipes, then it's going to fork three times, once uh, for each of these processes. In the first process, for cat, before it actually executes the cat, it'll set the output uh, of, of the cat process to go to the fda's pipe. Meanwhile, in the fork for grep, it'll dupe the read end of FDAs to the input of grep. At the same time, it'll dupe the output of FDs B to be the output of grep and the input of FDs B to be the input of WC. That's how a shell will put all these things together. Uh, to make sure the programs behave correctly, it will need to close all of the file descriptors that it's not using. Uh, and in fact, what that means is after all the dupe twos, before the execs, just close all of the pipes uh, that are pipe ends that are referred to the, by the file descriptors A and B arrays, um, and the parent needs to do that too. So I really mean that there are 16 calls to close that need to happen to get this pipeline properly set up. Another way to arrange these things would uh, to fork this process be before uh, creating the FDSB pipes. Um, there are different ways to organize it, but essentially the same pi pipeline structure has to be set up. Okay. Note also an important thing about that uh, limit on pipes. Because the pipe, that's represented by this vertical bar here, uh, because that pipe has a limited size, the cat program, which is likely to be faster than grip, will only be able to go so far ahead. Like it would be bad if you were working on very large files. All cat has to do is copy data, so it's very fast. Grep has to, to look for matches. If cat could just go as fast as it wanted to, it would generate a lot of um, bytes for grep to process. But the pipe limit ensures that this process doesn't get too far ahead of this other process. And that's one of the secrets to maybe making these pipelines work well.